I feel like if I have a sound, it kind of discovered me, you know? And, uh, you know. Zen. That's totally Zen. <laughs> it's, it's more Zen I, than I'm prepared to be. <laughs> bought was an MXR distortion pedal um, my friend and I in my very first band we didn't we weren't sure like how things were gonna shake out who was gonna play what so we went in on a, a pawn shop guitar and a 30 watt PV backstage amp together um, <laughs> and like just dinking around didn't know how to play at all didn't know about tuning or anything but just knew how to make noise and discovered the gain button on the PV was just like, you know, like really cool. We kind of felt like Jimi Hendrix, but not knowing how to play. <laughs> um, and then uh, added the distortion plus to that. And it just <laughs> screamed. Like my, my original guitar sound, once I learned about tuning and playing bar chords and stuff was, you know, this is like hard, kind of hardcore days. It was like just, you know, play chords. And then like whenever I stopped, it would just go, <laughs> that was my sound. <laughs> I didn't buy the first pedal I got, actually. Um, I bought an amp and I had a guitar and I was playing in a band. And I was like, I worked at a Japanese restaurant and one of the guys that worked there was a couple years older than me and had been in a bunch of punk bands. And I was like, yeah, I just can't make the guitar sound the way I want it to. Like, it's, it just sounds so wimpy and stuff. He's like, well, what distortion box are you using? And I said, like, what's that? I literally did not know, you know, and uh, he just kind of smiled, and the next day uh, he came into work and handed me a super fuzz pedal. <laughs> he said, try this. <laughs> and it was like, you know, the life-changing moment, <laughs> I guess. I was like, holy crap. <laughs> Okay, my chain starts with the Peterson strobe tuner, goes into the Bit Commander, then into the Watson Classic Fuzz, which is kind of like uh, a super fuzz, and into this, I don't know what this could possibly be, <laughs> uh, but they tell me it's the guts of a 60s fuzz that was made by Ibanez in the early 90s for a couple of years, um, and it's just housed in a better uh, box and into the uh, park fuzz, the gray channel, the organizer, and it finishes off with this uh, Moog delay. To me, the chain starts at the amp, and I go from the amp to a MXR micro. The chain amp. starts with a guitar. <laughs> amp. <laughs> guitar. <laughs> into a Vox wah-wah, into a little Big Muff, into a DoD Overdrive preamp T50, to a, uh, actually, I think, the, oh yeah, then, then I go to the MXR Phase 90 and to the Ibanez, uh, what's it called, Ultra Tube Screamer, I think, to the Peterson Tuner, to my guitar. And what's powering all that, Steve? Oh, that would be the pedal power, which I haven't hidden like Mark has. You can't see mine. I'm not, I'm not as professional yet. I'm, I'm still working uh, on that. <laughs> I'm just ashamed. So We're I really new it. to pedal like boards, like so. <laughs> I didn't quite get mine completely finished before we went on tour. <laughs> this is pretty deluxe. This mark. is super. This is insane for me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, in the beginning, Mud Honey was basically two pedals. It was a Big Muff and it was a Super Fuzz. And well, I, I, I always had the Wah Wah. Oh, right, right. Yeah, but I mean, like, just but in that terms was, that of was the, the, that, that was the idea. sound. Yeah. Um, and after a little while, the Super Fuzz crapped out and they're kind of hard to find. And uh, so I ended up just like with like a Distortion Plus and just a various fuzzes that I tried over and over again until I 
landed on that uh, Ibanez uh, 60s fuzz. And you know, the irony of the Ibanez 60s fuzz is actually based on a Big Muff. Yeah. <laughs> would, but, but it sounds fuzzier than that to me. Yeah, it yeah. sounds it, more it, like a super fuzz. Yeah, it kind of has more sustain or something. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. Or it just holds a, holds a note longer. Yeah. Uh, I guess that's sustain, right? Yeah, I think so. It's, um, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> and every once in a while, I'd, I'd like throw in some weird things like a Rota vibe. Like I played uh, in this other band with Guy before he joined Mudhoney and different things like that. Um, and on our new record, we have this song that has like a, a play an organ intro, like a Farfisa organ, and um, that's kind of hard to replicate on guitar, but the organizer kind of fills that spot. Um, it doesn't quite, sa it sounds more like a church organ than a Farfisa, um, yeah, it's but, cool it, sound, but it's though. really cool sound. <laughs> yeah. and it, uh, you know, it was exciting that there was a thing that kind of filled that void that I needed. Once we get in the studio, you know, I like to play around with a lot of different boxes and, you know, I bring two amps generally, you know, I've, I've got a, a Fender a Hot Rod DeVille that is my main live amp and stuff, but then I always bring a, at least one or two smaller Fender amps in with me. And uh, so I just kind of hit or miss, like see, see what's working, you know, I bring, I brought a crap ton of boxes in this last recording session. You did have a lot of boxes. I did. <laughs> it got confusing. I had, I had this like master list of like what I actually recorded the songs with because like I will never remember this. <laughs> like, and I, you I need a bigger board. The songs. I, yeah, I don't want a bigger board though. <laughs> <laughs> but the song we played at Soundcheck, I used the speaker cranker through uh, Deluxe, and that was kind of the basic sound of it. I was trying to sound like the urinals, basically. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what they played, but <laughs> I imagine it was a small amp. I imagine they had a small amp. <laughs> Mostly, if, if I come up with a song, I'm just playing an acoustic guitar at home, you know, sitting on the couch, you know. Um, and going, man, I wish this had fuzz on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's really honestly how most of that stuff happens for me, you know. Like, I, I don't sit around and trying to find a sound first, you know, I'm just finding chords and notes that sound interesting to me that I tend to keep, just keep playing over and over and over and over. It's like, so I go, well, if I've been playing this for like 15 minutes now, it must be something I like, so. <laughs> and then he inflicts it on the rest of us. <laughs> yep. <laughs> the distortion that I had been using recently for the last probably like 10 or 15 years was a DOD Overdrive Preamp 250. Um, and it seemed by the description that the gray channel was kind of like that without saying it in so many words. Yeah, they, they, they um, try not to, to say um, that they're mimicking it, I guess. And what's kind of cool about it is that it's got, I, I'm, basically when I use it for the distortion, I use it in the green channel with the, uh, I guess, what is it, the silicon flipped up. And then like the red channel, I just use as a volume boost, kind of play it clean and use it to boost like when I'm doing a lead with that pedal or something else. I actually probably use the most are uh, this Ibanez 60s fuzz and uh, the Park fuzz, which to me actually it sounds more like a distortion, just like a high gain distortion than it does an actual fuzz, but I guess that's kind of quibbling. Right. Yeah, that's kind of, those, that's, those are like the two that I use most. You know, a lot of the, the older Mudhoney songs would be the Big Muff, like, you know, In and Out of Grace. Touch Me, I'm Sick, Sweet Young Thing Ain't Sweet No More would be the big muff primarily, and then if I have a, a lead, I might go to the Overdrive 250 or the microamp, depending. Real what quick. about on the newer song, Steve? Kind of the same. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> we do what we do, Mark. <laughs>